Good morning, everybody. Today is a dreary, miserable, foggy, yucky day, but we're gonna say it is a terrific Tuesday. I want you to get out your terrific hat and put it on and say, hey, we're gonna have a great, great day. Today, I have, um, I have so many prayer requests and it is amazing. Yesterday, Selena went through third chemo round. Okay, we have to continue praying for her. And I brought these today to share because we still have some CDs available. They are $10 each and this money goes to help Selena get through what she's facing. And let me tell you what you're facing when you're battling cancer. Number one, you are facing the um, illness, the sickness, the sadness, and the loss of income. And so here are a couple more and uh, there you go. Please, if you want a copy and you are in the North Market, Miss Jen has those for you and Miss Jen can get them to you. And um, most of you know her, you know how to find her. I will post her phone number later because she might choke me out. I'll have to get her permission to do that. But um, I hope that everybody out there who loves Angel Spirit and loves their music will join me in supporting Selena. The battle of facing cancer. Um, we saw that with our executive producer here at ETC. Danny Hensley has done very, very well and prayer has gotten him through so much. Y'all continue to pray for him. Y'all continue to pray for Selena. We have seen so many families face this same darned diagnosis and it happens over and over and over again. We know that cancer has made all kinds of advancements and all kinds of things are happening and the chemo is better and the treatment is better and often the results are better. So we're gonna say a prayer for them. And y'all know what prayer does because you have seen our friend Hans Rufert who made it 15 years when the doctors gave him like 1% chance of living. It was just crazy. And he's still here and he's playing pickleball. Now y'all think about that. He is out there, he walks his child to daycare. He does all these crazy things. He is so active and he is so vibrant and so alive and so sharing his message with everybody because he is a survivor. And one day we wanna look back and say, my gosh, do you remember when Selena battled cancer? And now look at her now, she's back to singing and doing what she did. And today we're gonna to share a little bit of what she did. She stepped up at um, a home that we were doing a Heart of the Home episode and she and Angel Spirit, the first time they were ever on television and I can remember it like yesterday, they were nervous, nervous, nervous. But Fred Wyndham, our wonderful director, um, just said, ladies, y'all are amazing. I mean, he took his headset off and he went, wow. And um, from that moment on, they had a little confidence built up because Fred was, he was just in awe of them. Loved them, loved them, loved them. Sadly, Diane went to be with the Lord. Not sadly, because if you're in heaven, is that a sad time? No, I don't think so. But um, Selena and her mom were left, and now her mom is planning a benefit to raise some money for Selena. And that is still early in the works. We're not sure of the date, the time, whatever. But I want you to go to my Facebook page and look at a wreath event. They're gonna be doing a class to make some really pretty Easter wreaths. And um, Easter is on, I believe it's April the 17th this year. So you can be a part of this class. It is again, a fundraiser for Miss Selena. And it is our way of giving back and our way of helping somebody that we love. And um, Angel Spirit stepped up on stage many, many days and helped those in the community that were hurting that needed to do a benefit. And they walked on stage and they sang and raised money for so many people. So it's time that we do the same for her. And we're gonna do that. But today I'm gonna share, everybody keeps asking me, how do you do that strawberry cobbler? How did you do that? How did, how, what'd you do with that? So I went back to the source. I started doing the strawberry cobbler the way I did it from a visit to R&A Orchards. So today we're gonna go back to r &A Orchards and if you know the Griggs family from up in McKaysville, Mineral Bluff area, Copper Hill area, you know that John and his boys, the first time I ever saw them was at Epworth at the college and they were doing a benefit for somebody else. The Barker brothers were there that night. So we're going back to some of my very, very favorite times. We also, tomorrow, we're gonna to devote tomorrow to the Bridgmans because Alicia Bridgman is about to have a very special birthday on Thursday. 
And so we're going to honor the Bridgmans tomorrow. So we're going to go back to some music and then we're going to talk a little bit with Bob and Evelyn Blackstone. You know, I've, I've shared the story of them and how precious this couple was. They moved from Ohio to Florida, from Florida to Georgia, and they absolutely loved living in this area. And then Evelyn was diagnosed with dementia and Alzheimer's and sadly lost that battle. And um, Bob was there, you know, he was there to try to care for her. They ended up ending up going back to Florida and um, sadly they weren't here when, when the end came and they left their little home up in Epworth that they absolutely loved. They fell in love with these mountains. Many of our viewers and many of our guests moved into the area and just fell in love with these mountains and that's what happens. Now, a couple of weeks ago you got to meet a gentleman and I have to say, Kenny has, has uh, made a mark on me forever because he sent me this book and it's called Culture Jock. And I was explaining this to somebody the other day. I said, if you think you're having a bad day, let me tell you about a bad day. And he chooses to smile and stay positive and to stay focused on caring for his wife who is a quadriplegic. She had medical issues. She had an emergency situation that did not turn out well and now he is her caretaker. I want you to buy this book or I want you to pay attention to my Facebook page tomorrow because tomorrow I'm gonna give away two of the books. And when I think about his life story, we all have a story to tell and we've all had heartache. But when I read his story, I was like, oh my goodness. And he is still perky and positive and, and trying to do all he can to care for his, his wife, Kay. So, so here you go. And he told you how to get a hold of this book. And I'm going to actually, we're going to add that to my Facebook page and I'll give you the instructions and how you could pick up a copy of it. But again, tomorrow, I'm going to do a little trivia and pay attention to today's program. That's all I'm going to tell you because today's program is going to feature a lot of good local music and it's gonna feature some people that I love. And then tomorrow on Facebook, I'm gonna ask a trivia question. So y'all are gonna to have to respond to that. Now, today we are going to somewhere that I love in the spring. I love, love, love r &A orchards. I love fresh peaches. I've made a ton of peach cobblers, but I've never used fresh peaches. But when I make strawberry cobbler, I use fresh peaches and Sprite. And folks are like, you do what? And I said, that's how I do it. So in the near future, we're also gonna be working on something. We're gonna compile all the recipes from my calendars. And um, these are gonna be available on YouTube. We're gonna compile this and we're gonna do a little mini split that you can have um, all these recipes because we've sold out of cookbooks. I have three of the first or second edition I did and I'm kind of keeping them um, to give as gifts, but I want you to know that you can go to YouTube and you can pick up these recipes. Each calendar had 12 recipes, so that'll be 24 recipes that we're gonna do in a little mini special, and it will give you some of my favorite recipes. Do you know where the recipes came from? From y'all, because y'all sent me your recipes. I tested them, the ones that I really, really liked, I shared. One that I really, really liked, my family didn't like it too much, but I liked it, so I added it to the calendar anyway. And it's one that my Aunt Louise did, and she did it when she would have company, and it's called Chicken Atherton. It sounds like a fancy, fancy little dish, and it kinda is, and I think that's why my family didn't like it. They like the simple, basic, good stuff. So, but you're gonna get 24 of my favorite recipes, and many of them were submitted by you from Copper Hill, from McKaysville, from Ella J, from Ball Ground, from the Yellow Creek area. I have some of all of those. So we're gonna share those and it's gonna be a little mini special and I hope you'll enjoy that and it'll be on YouTube in a couple of weeks. So, all right guys, we're gonna go to r &A Orchards. Um, the family who owns r &A Orchards is like third, fourth generation owning this amazing business out on Highway 52 East. The worst thing about r &A Orchards is when you get there, sometimes you pass by it, you're not paying attention. So turn your blinker on and be cautious when you turn in. And if you're hungry, turn in at lunchtime and get some of those amazing chicken and dumplings. Pick up some fried pies and take them to your office. Pick up some pumpkin bread and take it to a friend. Just go in and spend some time and know that they have all kinds of great fruits and vegetables and they have some of the best 
five pepper jelly you ever tried in your life and that's what I use with my chicken salad. So we're going to visit now with the folks who own r &A Orchard. We're going to visit now with the, the Griggs family. We're going to visit now with the Barker brothers and then I'll be back in between for some breaks and uh, chit chat with y'all and it's going to be a positive terrific Tuesday. I'll see you again in just a few minutes. And we have been blessed with a lot of rain. Now, this fourth generation farm needed the rain, didn't it? Andy, what do you think about this rain? It's been a godsend. It has been a godsend, and we have prayed for rain. Our governor said pray for rain. We did, and it has been a great spring and now a really good summer. Yes, we're having a wonderful year. Got a wonderful crop of fruit, and everything looks good. And we have to say the two little ones sitting in your lap are fourth generation RNA orchards. That is correct. And it started with first generation Ann's parents. Right. In what year? 47. 1947. 1947. <laughs> before I was born. Well, <laughs> I just go ahead sure? and tell you, it was right before I was born, too. <laughs> well, you know what? Can you imagine that your children got to stay at home and work and they've never had to go into the city? They've never had to look for employment. They had it. They had it. Isn't that wonderful? That's a blessing. Of course, it's hard work. It is hard work. It is hard work, and I have to say, the precious child sitting in your lap makes a mean peach cobbler. Yep. Somebody told me that it was really good, and I think Papa said that last time she made one, Daddy ate the whole thing. Did Daddy eat the whole thing? I ate every bit of it. <laughs> that is amazing. How old are you, eight years old? Eight. And who taught you to cook? My mom. Your mom. Isn't that cool? Now, not many eight-year-olds can cook. Do you help here on the farm otherwise? Yes. You pick peaches? Yes. Squash? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had a squash casserole? No. No, I love squash. I want to know what she likes better, peaches or apples? Both. You don't, know, you don't have Both. a favorite? <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. There's no bad season at r &A Orchards, is there? As to who taught her to drive a truck and a tractor? Somebody told me very young you learned to drive a truck and a tractor. Who taught you? Your dad. Did Papa have a little bit to do with that too? I thought he might. Now, the RNA stands for a certain something, and it's a family name, isn't it? <clears throat> when you you are the fourth generation, do you think the fifth generation will continue that name? I think if so. If they do, they have to put another letter on there. RNA uh, and then some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> RNA and Jessica, <laughs> right? That's Amanda. Where's Jessica? Right. That's Jessica. And that is Anna Grace. That's <laughs> That's Anna. Oh, it's like Tender Care. Y'all yeah. should have worn name tags. <laughs> now, Roger, when you married Ann, did you think this is where you'd spend your life? Had no clue. <laughs> you came up here and thought City Slicker's going to get yeah. up here and just get him a cushy job, didn't yeah. you? Well, see, Ann, Ann didn't want to move back. I'm the one who wanted to move back. Really? But, but uh, uh, you know, the Lord's been good to us. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So. And this has been a phenomenal year for all your fruits and vegetables. Right, it's just right. been great. I was out here about three weeks ago taking pictures. And we were very lucky because that was a very hot time. But everything was beautiful. And so far, so good. Everything's done well, hadn't it? There was no frost, no freeze to damage anything well, this year. The, the good Lord's blessed us so far, so we just keep praying that, mm -hmm. that he'll continue to bless because you know with the afternoon thunderstorms you worry about Oh yeah, the damage. And oh yeah. How much rain did y'all get yesterday, Andy? We got three inches. Wow, I knew. I sat in Gilmer County for over an hour waiting to drive home. Anybody who knows me knows I don't drive in the rain much. <laughs> and that wasn't just normal rain yesterday. It was pretty tough. It was pretty so, a lot of rain. Mm -hmm. I sat there a long time waiting on it to kind of die down. And I figured it was getting about an inch an hour. So, yeah. Now, did that damage anything? Are you okay with that? Well, everything's pretty much all right. You know, it's we. You know, we had a little wind, lost uh -huh. a little bit of fruit on the ground, but every, you know, other than that, everything's everything fine. was good. Well, I went up to Epworth after that or before that and took a picture, and corn was laying on the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, the stalks were laying down, mm -hmm. so it had really they had a lot of wind. Yeah. So, and that was something. The wind uptown when I was sitting there was going sideways, and yeah. the rain was going sideways. That's pretty damaging sometimes, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Now, what are you picking right now? Well, we're picking. Uh, Right today, we're picking Red Haven peaches, Early Lauren peaches, 
Uh, we're going to pick beans today. We're, you know, we, of course, we pick cucumbers, squash. Andy, if you hurry up and pick them, all these ladies can string them. Yeah. I've yeah. never had a string bean party. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a great idea? Yeah. Hey, maybe I'm a quilt and be a string oh, bean. Well, listen, y'all just get some bushels of beans and hand them out, and everybody can start stringing beans. That is so cool. Right. <laughs> now, do the girls. What a life for children. What an awesome life for children. Do they know how much they have to appreciate this life? Because they are very blessed. Well, I think they, I think they enjoy it. And they like to come to the Apple House. And uh, Jessica and Amanda both, they like to go out in the orchard and pick peaches and work. And so we, well, I enjoy it. And when does Jessica get to start driving? Uh, let's see. <laughs> next year. She, next year. <laughs> no, it's going to be a few more <laughs> Uh-oh, Granny has spoken. <laughs> you'd have a hard, if I was their age, you'd have a hard time keeping me out of the ice cream freezer. Uh -huh. well, no, they, they do. They do. <laughs> they have ice cream every day. Yeah. Okay. yeah, well, what a great life. They can run around barefooted. They can see the soil. They can watch everything from start to finish. Are there ever days that y'all just get so tired, you think, man, why am I doing this seven days a week? Well, sometimes, sometimes you get a little down and out, but, you know, I always try to remember that I'm blessed Absolutely. and I'm able to get up every morning and do what I love. Right. So, you know, I, I enjoy it. You know, when you think about it, you really don't have a boss to deal with. Well, uh -huh. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting on this. <laughs> what does that R stand for? <laughs> You know, What'd you know, you, you know what you're doing, and you've got it together, and and y'all have built a wonderful, successful business. And I have to say, this time last year, we would not have done a live show here. You know why? It wasn't air conditioned. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Today it is air conditioned, That's and right. it is wonderful. You have great food here. I know that the chicken and dumplings are world famous because are they your mama's recipe? No. Whose recipe is? I just throwed it together. You threw it? That's like my recipe. See? Well, I know people stop here every day and have lunch. A great place to just chill, have lunch. Some people stop and get their food to take with them to their jobs because you have quick sandwiches. So it's just a great, and, and you are, how many miles from Amicalola Falls are you? We're about 12, 14 miles. Okay, and four and a half miles from downtown LJ. Four and a half miles from LJ. So people could come out on their lunch hours as far oh, as that yeah. goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. hang out with you. And you have quite a few seats here that we happen to have full to the max. Did you notice we're out of chairs and we're still waiting on chairs? <laughs> yes, I noticed that. What are we going to do about that? You know, <laughs> <laughs> we got to get some chairs in here. Well, this is a great day for RNA, but it is a great day for Gilmer County. This area welcomes people, and I have met some of the nice and nicest people on this program because they came here, they visited, they love the atmosphere, they love the warmth. And there's such a warmth in this community. There is such a warmth. And um, we're going to share some of the blessings that um, natural God-given talent. We're going to have some local folks come on and sing. We're going to have, um, when we leave with y'all now, we're going to have a little, little something about farming that I think you'll both enjoy. And um, I'm not going to cry when I hear it today. It's just a great, <laughs> great something. We are very blessed that God has taken care of all of us. Oh, yeah. And I, so, I want to say I appreciate you coming out and doing the this show This has for been us. so much fun. I've looked so forward to it. This and is we're great. we're glad to have everybody that's here today. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's wonderful. And don't forget how to get here because every week you have different things coming in, don't you? Oh, yeah. You? We change, um, like on peaches, we pretty much change varieties every week. And with our vegetables, you know, we're picking fresh stuff every day. Mm -hmm. We pick peaches every day, weather permitting. We're going to tell everybody how you and I went to the orchard. <laughs> <laughs> I came and I said, I need to take some pictures. And he said, okay. And he said, get in that truck. And I looked at that truck and I said, Bubba, does that thing have air conditioning? He said, no. And I said, well, you get in the black widow wagon. <laughs> so we drove through the orchard in the widow wagon. <laughs> we did, we did, we did. Well, thank you for opening Sherry, your Sherry, door. Before you go, let, let, let me let me say one thing because nobody's. I'm gonna let a little secret out uh, to the TV audience that we're real proud of. Uh -huh. We got a new uh, uh, another grandbaby on the way. I knew so that. I knew that. <laughs> I Yay. <wanted> to say. <laughs> Yay. We're real, we're real proud about that, and I would like to say too for for everybody. I, I I'm just blessed blessed to have my children involved, and Andy and Jennifer does an excellent job running the Apple House and. We just proud that you came. Me and their boss is a pretty easy job, isn't it? Oh yeah, I just tell Andy <laughs> every day. You know, he says I can tell him enough to do in looking five minutes. But I'm, you know, I am 
just real thankful that that we we do work together as a family. And, That's right. And, you're very fortunate. Right. Very fortunate. And, and you're Proud of my on, grandchildren. Bringing on the fourth generation. So yeah. That, is, yeah. that is amazing. And it is a wonderful success story. Yeah. And also, I'd like to say I appreciate all of our help that helped us here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we got a good bunch of people. And Makes a world of difference. Yeah. So that's why ETC works. We have a family of people working together. Never hit. I mean, we always get it right. We, you know, if somebody needs something, we go to them. It's just kind of, and that's what this community is about. That's right. what this community is about. Well, I love you all, and thank you so much for opening your doors to us. This is this is going to be, oh, it may rival with my favorite show ever. <laughs> <laughs> of course, now, Sherry, we do have a, a daughter. A Andy's our oldest son, uh -huh. and, and Rhonda is our daughter. But she always said she wanted to go to school and work with her uh, mind. mind instead of her body because, of course, Andy's got a mind, too. Uh -huh. And... Um, <laughs> He likes, he likes, he likes <laughs> Well, what a great life he's chosen. What a great life. Now, we're going to take a break, and we're going to go to the community calendar. And when we come back, we're going to hear a little something about farming that I think will touch everybody. What a sweet, sweet memory. And you're going to get more of those memories from that very, very special day. You know, I wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for Roger Fudge and a telephone call he made on a rainy, miserable day when we were at a, a racetrack where we had been for three days in a motorhome with a bunch of kids and mud and crud and oh my goodness gracious, I will never forget. I always say it's the call that saved my life because we have had so many years of happiness and so much fun on television and the idea that we have these amazing memories we can share with y'all. When I look at that, I think about the Fudge kids. They're graduating high school now. They're headed to college now. Look at that, all these years that we have been able to come into your homes. And uh, I'm so thankful to Roger and to Ann and to their family from, for opening the door at r &A for us that day. We had so much fun. And to Sylvia Johnson, you looked amazing. So many people in the audience, uh, many of them have gone to be with the Lord, but we're able to share these special, special memories. So today is certainly a terrific Tuesday. A couple of months ago, a terrific event happened in the Nelson community. Allison and Dustin Barrett got married, and I want to share a photo. She planned this wedding, and she did an amazing job. I love the fact that she used one of her grandmother's old pieces of furniture as she walked down the aisle in the backyard. And I think that is the coolest thing. I asked her, I said, Allison, where did you get that idea? And she said, actually, I got it off Pinterest. So we all go to Pinterest and we all get these cool ideas. And I just thought that was amazing that she used that piece of furniture from her grandmother's. So congratulations to Dustin and to Allison. Many, many years of happiness. And uh, they are growing their family with a couple of kitty cats and just loving life and uh, enjoying the moment. So that's what it's about. Also, there's a very special young man in Jasper who is celebrating a birthday today. Everybody, everybody in Jasper knows Dr. Sonny Proctor, who has been a, a local physician for many, many years and now a city council member for several years. And uh, everybody who ever goes down Main Street looks and says, I love that beautiful brick home, which is their home that they restored. And it's gorgeous. They raised their son Folsom there. And today is Folsom's birthday. So happy, happy birthday. That's not Folsom today. That's Folsom about 20 years ago. So I think that is the coolest photo. And congratulations, Folsom Proctor, on your birthday. Happy, happy birthday to you. We are looking around at those friends, those moments, those memories. And there's so many amazing memories that started with television for me. Um, I met so many wonderful people. I was introduced to you through your music, the Barker Brothers, the Griggs family, the um, Barry Abernathy. You know, I didn't even know who Mountain Heart was, goodness, when I came here. And now Barry has a new group and they are doing very, very well. And to Jacob Bryant, who hit the stage of the Opry this weekend. I mean, that was amazing. This is local talent that started in these mountains of North Georgia. And so today, I think it's very appropriate that we go back to RNA Orchards and we share some music. Now, the Griggs family had said, oh my gosh, I can't believe you have that. I can't believe you have the footage. This is going to be for everybody to watch, to uh, subscribe to. It's gonna go up on YouTube and it's gonna be available for y'all because everybody said, could we have a copy of that? Of course you can. This is a family that sadly lost John 
but not before he left, so many amazing memories and so such a a kind heart and such a good, good man. And so we salute you. And today we're going to share the Griggs family with you. If you ever listen to radio up in the McKaysville area, then you know one of the boys who, who actually worked at the radio station. And if you like tractors, then you know the other boys. And if you just like farming and growing up, you like the other boys. And it's so funny how this family, they all have a little tendency of their daddy. So here we go to r &A Orchards as we relive a wonderful moment in television history. now today y'all get really really close to your TV and smell I think you can smell the peaches do y'all smell peaches I smell peaches because I have I'm joined by Ed and Evelyn Blackstone <coughs> from Ohio slash Orlando slash McKaysville F Worth F Worth <laughs> I went to F Worth and I met the most wonderful two people today they are here celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary with us Evelyn made me, yay, 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 yay. a big fan, 60 years, but if he'd have met me first, you'd have never made it. <laughs> <laughs> she made me the most precious angel pen out of a peach. A peach seed. A peach seed. Oh, now this yes. is absolutely darling, and thank you so thank much you. you're wearing one of them. Right. Mm -hmm. But when y'all leave today, you are going to Orlando tomorrow morning. We are leaving early tomorrow morning to celebrate your anniversary with your That's children right, with but you children. chose to be here with us today That's right. what an honor I and called, thank you so much i called my daughter and told her to make sure the internet's on this morning uh -huh. going to be here that's <laughs> right that's right and and i can't tell you your friendship you walked over to me at picking in the park right and you gave me a little doll you made me right and you told me that Bob watches every day with his oatmeal. So y'all, when you hear me say, good morning, Bob, how's the oatmeal? There's Bob, <laughs> there's Bob. He watches every day and faithful viewers like you are what makes this program happen. Thank you. you know, it takes everybody coming together and you have to do it on a regular basis. You have to come to me and tell me, what do you want to talk about? What do you want to hear? Who do you want to have on as a guest? It's very important that you have an input. So guys, do like Evelyn, come and see me make me a darling little angel that is so precious i, I think it's neat that they're going to spend their 60th wedding anniversary at disney world riding all of our roller coasters <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> which, ones, which ones you gonna ride yeah yeah i want to yeah. go with you yeah no our daughter's having a big do for us sunday at 1 30 and he doesn't know who's going to be there okay. i do <laughs> but you're going to be there you're yeah, going to be, be there, there. <laughs> you're going to be there well, we want to wish you Godspeed and safe, safe thank travels you. to Orlando. And thank you so thank much for you. spending your anniversary with us. I are, appreciate it so much, and I appreciate your friendship. We'll, so we'll thank watch you. you on the Internet while we're there. I know yeah. you will. I know you will. <laughs> thank you so much. Now, we're going to let y'all hang out here for just a minute. Let me have the mic. And we talked about farming this morning. We are in farming communities. We are in um, Gilmer County. Many of you have remarkable gardens. We have done, um, Donovan Jones did a CD and a DVD for us with pictures of your gardens that I've taken. We're going to listen to the Griggs family now, and we're going to talk about gardening in a way that you may not have heard before, so sit back and enjoy this. This is my way of thanking the Lord for the recent rains. While resting one evening by the side of the road, I seen an old farmer in a field he just hoed. His face was all brown and wrinkled by the wind, and he was talking to the Lord just like you'd be talking to a friend. Well, sir, he said in a voice calm and quiet, them corn tassels need stacking, but I got no string to tie it. Been no rain in so long that the fields is mighty dusty. Been so unbearable hot that the kids are even getting fussy. Now that grass down in the pasture should be knee high. If we could just have a little shower, Lord, it might keep the cow from going dry. 
huh, listen at me talking. You'd think I weren't grateful. Why, if you didn't know me so well, Lord, you'd think I was downright hateful. You'd think I forgot about the new calf that you sent, the money in the mail that took care of the rent. Ma's cold is better and Johnny's home from the Navy and that good Sunday dinner of chicken, dumplings, and gravy. The new preacher you sent us, Lord, he sure is a fine young man. Why, he's just converting them sinners to beat the band. Well, guess I'll be moseying along now, Lord. Won't take no more of your time. Guess there's plenty of folks hereabouts waiting to ring your line. Evening to you, Lord, and watch over us tonight. Don't you worry none about us, Lord, because everything's going to be just all right. Well, I picked myself up and I headed for home because it was getting along about dusk. And I went through the rest of that evening without thinking of the old farmer much. Till long about midnight, I was awakened by the distant sound of thunder. And by daybreak, there was the sweet smell of summer rain on dry, parched dust. And I remembered the scripture that reads, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. message because thanks to God we do have rain today and it has been a wonderful wonderful day and we're going to take another break and we're going to go I'm not sure what Adam's got queued up I don't know if we even have our bits today I heard it was NASCAR racing okay we're going to go back to the weather page for just a second but I have to say a good good day today is Mama Lucy's <coughs> 70 <coughs> something's birthday <laughs> and a good good day to Faye Edwards who is in Ludville at the nursing home recovering from a lot of medical problems. Granny Faye, as many of you know her, worked in a little place kind of like this, but it was a little um, truck stop, yeah. fuel stop, made the best biscuits in the world. And we had calls last night from people who said, please ask for prayer for Miss Faye Edwards. So My I'm pleasure. asking all of you in our viewing audience, pray for her. She is a wonderful woman. Everybody calls her Granny. For you truckers who stopped there for many, many years. Okay, I love the Griggs family, and what an honor to be able to share that with everybody. And I hope that you will save this. Again, it will go up on YouTube later, and I want you to share it with everybody because John went to be with the Lord too soon, but um, he left a legacy of some wonderful children, a beautiful wife, Alice, and um, we salute this family. You know, this, this, these mountains are full of families who brought music to television. And this is local television, local talent, and local folks who love to do what they were doing. One of the other people that I brought to television was Dan Elliott and his family. And um, y'all knew him, you got to meet him. He's Bill Elliott's brother. We spent many, many hours together. Angela absolutely adored the Elliott family, and Sheena has gone through some things that um, she didn't make public for a long time, but she was involved in a situation that was um, abusive, and she got out of the situation, and she has started a, a thing called The Boardroom on Facebook, and I want to share today's post from The Boardroom because it is very fitting and it is very, uh, I think it's very uplifting for everybody. So, so this is what I'm gonna read Sheena's post for today. If you really wanna be like Jesus, be the one who stays when everyone else walks away. Be the one who forgives, even when it's undeserved. Be the one to show grace when everyone else is casting stones. Be the one to show love, even when they betray you, because that's who Jesus is. And I think that's a very fitting saying for today's world. We have all seen things that um, hurt and can't be forgiven and, and that's everything can be forgiven because you know who forgave everything? Jesus did. 
And so when I looked up this morning and I saw this, I thought, oh, we have to share this today. So again, if you really want to be like Jesus, be the one who stays when everyone else walks away. Be the one who forgives, even when it's undeserved. Be the one to show grace when everyone else is casting stones. Be the one to show love, even when they betray you, because that's who Jesus is. So there you go. Remember the years that the uh, What Would Jesus Do bracelets came out? My goodness gracious, everybody had them. But again, this is the boardroom, and it is something that Sheena Elliott started after she had been in an abusive situation. and. Her family didn't know, she didn't share it with friends, she was very quiet about it, and then one day she decided that she needed to do this, and so she's helping so many people. And um, that's what we do, we try to reach out, we help other people. As I was going through my daughter's things after her death, I found some stuff that made me um, happy because she loved when I had been honored. It made me sad because she wasn't here to help me again. But on today's program, one of the people that we're going to feature are Rick and Lucy Harris and the Barker Brothers. We're going to go to them in just a minute. But I remember this, and this is something that I found in Angela's stuff. And this was when the troops were um, involved in war, and it was when Noah Harris was killed. And we were putting up red, white, and blue and yellow ribbons all over the place. And Angela had saved this article from the newspaper, and it meant so very, very much to me when I found it that my daughter cared about the things we were doing in the community to help others. I also found some things about the tornado that happened and um, many people were affected by the tornado. But then I found something that really, really warmed my heart. And this is when my daughter opened her home to any and everybody. You didn't have to have a ticket, you didn't have to pay, all you had to do was walk in the door. And Angela opened her home and we had about 400 guests a weekend who would come through her house that's what she liked to do. She liked to reach out to others. And um, what I would give if my daughter had reached out and said, Mom, I'm at a point of uh, I don't want to live. Uh, my life would have been a little bit different and things would have changed, but maybe what happened made me stronger. And then I found something that my sweet daughter had. And I had forgotten all about this. And this is crazy. This is an article about restoring an old farmhouse, and it was my way of dealing with the loss of my husband of 25 years. And so I jumped in and I restored an old farmhouse, and um, then I moved on to build a new home. But it was crazy because at the same time, I joined the Board of Directors for Habitat for Humanity, and I found out so much about our mountains and our community and I found out that some people don't have even a roof over their head. And uh, recently in Ball Ground, I heard a story of a gentleman who is living without electricity. In today's world, nobody should be living without electricity. So it is our duty, uh, God says love thy neighbor. So we need to reach out and help everybody we can. And a salute to Dominic's in Ball Ground for everything you're doing to help the community. Offering meals, offering a, a message of hope, offering prayer offering so many things because he's a New Yorker who came to Ball Ground and absolutely fell in love with the community. That's what we do. We go to a community and we make a difference. And Dominic, we salute you. Okay, we're gonna go back to RNA Orchards and uh, I just want you to sit back and reflect on the many amazing people that we have been able to share and to bring a message to you from ETC TV3. you could all be here. I wish you could be in Gilmer County and feel the presence of the warm, wonderful people. Now, we are going to talk about a man. Shelton grew he, he, Annie's daddy and Annie's name for pre, next trivia question Annie's name is Nancy Diane Shelton. An article was in the paper this week about her dad who is a true grassroots farmer. This is so funny. He brought, they brought us white cucumbers. That's Have you ever me. seen a white cucumber? Mm -hmm. No, I haven't. It kind of matches either. your hair, Lucy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are being joined uh -oh. by more local folks, Rick and Lucy Harris, Noah's mom and dad. Now, you know what an impact your child made on us. But this county, this community, and this mom and dad are the reason this was an amazing young man. And are you documenting his life in a book now? Yes, we are. He's I am so excited about that. 
pictures? Yep. Do you need pictures from people who may have been in the celebration of Noah's life? Well, that's how we got in contact with that's you. It. Because, uh, that's it. Jim Fox sent out an email message and ended up a lot of pictures are coming in, and that's how we made contact with you. That is wonderful. You. And, and you know, it was a day, I don't think there was ever a Saturday in Gilmer County, but I don't think there was a day for such celebration either because seeing you and your strength, you gave every person in the country a strength that we never thought we'd find. Well, that's because our Noah was so strong, and he believed so much in the community and mm -hmm. in his mission and in a higher vision. Mm -hmm. um, it was really hard for everybody, I know, and we have discovered through writing the book that um, just as we've talked to a lot of people and uh, read what they wrote about now, how deeply impacted people were. And so uh, that actually from ETC3 had a lot to do with us writing Absolutely. this book because Joe McCutcheon talked to us and I kind of flippantly said, well, yes, we're going to write a book. And he started saying, okay, <laughs> where, where's the book? Show Produce me the, book. the good. <laughs> That's right. And really it, it's taken a whole year. Every well, day. do you Every remember day. the call? I called you at school and told you I had my mom's beanie baby. I was too, I knew this was the share. That, you that know, is so, I, just, I was sitting there watching the story with Noah, and I said, my gosh, what an awesome young man, what an awesome young man. So the next day I called Christy Lindstrom, and I said, how can I get in touch with Noah's mom? And she said, let me give you the number at the school. So I called. My mom had passed away a month before that right. and left me all these Beanie Babies, and I heard Noah talking about the fact that he wanted to share Beanie Babies with the children of Iraq. So, you know, a, a wonderful, kind, small gesture he did introduced me to him through the Beanie Babies. Never got to meet him, never got to know how wonderful he was, but I do know how wonderful he was. And then the morning that Noah lost his life, Christy Lindstrom calls me. And she called my office. I wasn't there yet. And she told my secretary. And when I walked in, I'd never met this young man. But I, 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 I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. So immediately we started making yellow ribbons. And, and everybody's, why are you making yellow ribbons? I said, I don't know. But I said, I just think we ought to. We did 27 miles of yellow ribbons to join the Gilmer County line. And That's we, in the book. It is. And it, and it was so <laughs> funny because when we did it, I can't make a bow. And everybody knows, honey, I've owned a florist for 20 years. I can't make a bow. I cannot make a bow, and people would come in and they'd say, well, they want to talk to you about the yellow ribbons you're making, and my daughter would, ha, 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 my mama can't make a bow. But we found volunteers who came to our florist. We found Vietnam veterans who walked in and handed me $100 and said, please buy some ribbons. Please add, they said, how far are you going? And I said, well, we were just going to come to Gilmer County down to Pickens. And they said, could you go further if we gave you more money? They gave us more money, and we just kept making bows. People would walk in the door and say, my son is in Iraq. What can I do to help? Strangers came together. So you brought this community. It will never again be the bond we held that week. Never again. And it was because your child sat on ETC3 and projected his life, and it was a great life. Well, I think that's great why life. it happened, because the unity of this community mm -hmm. is here. And... I think it always will be. It's something we need to cherish and mm -hmm. promote. And hopefully the book is going to just be a great celebration. Like Noah's life was a celebration mm -hmm. of how was wonderful things are. Was he not precious? Are. He just glowed. I mean, he, just, he did. He glowed. Now, he is, he is both of you together. What traits did he have from each of you? <laughs> okay, but, Dad, you're on the spot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He got um, a, a love from for people from me, but he also got my warrior aspect. And he got uh, just his um, joy of life and love of people from his mother too. So it was a it was a nice blend. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was he was an amazing young man, and he. Um, I don't think there'll ever be a day that anybody in Gilmer County will forget that day. You know, and and I came. I didn't come to the funeral because I knew y'all were packed out. I came and sat across the street and sat and listened to patriotic music as Noah's funeral was happening. And I sat there and sobbed uncontrollably, and I said, this is stupid. They are celebrating his life. Then that night I went home and watched the replay, and I was better because you did celebrate his life. 
you know, and, and it just, um, it was amazing. This book is going to be another celebration, too, because as we piece together the fragments and the stories, and uh, um, I find that as we put it together, I see my son in a whole new light. Mm -hmm. I, I see the yeah. completeness of him because so much of his time was spent at school or mm -hmm. away from home and, you know, away from my experience. So mm -hmm. this this has given me a new insight on, mm -hmm. on the kind of life he lived, and I'm just even more proud of him. I, I know you don't know this, but one day I was sitting in a restaurant in Jasper, Georgia. I was sitting in the Peking Garden having dinner on a Sunday night, and a young man from Gilmer County got up from his table, walked over, and hugged me and said, I'm from Gilmer County. I was one of Noah's best friends. Thank you for the ribbons you put up in memory of my, my friend. That was Mickey Stark. Oh, and yeah. it was, and today we are good friends. And I said it was so funny. He just, I was having dinner with some friends. He was having dinner with his wife, and he just got up from his table, walked over, and he said, "I have to give you a hug." I can't tell you how many hugs I got because your son stepped into my life, and and he stepped into my well, life. He would love that because oh. you know his thirteen hugs thing. <laughs> you, he just, just believed that everybody. You don't know how those. many hugs I got because of Noah. And I said, there have been so many days when I found out you were going to be here. I called a friend and I said, you are the strongest person I know. You have to help me get through this. And he said, just listen to them and learn from their strengths. Learn from their yeah. strengths. And you two have to be the strongest. And, and you are what Gilmer County is so proud. What an honor. What an absolute honor to be able to um, salute Rick and Lucy Harris, to salute their son Noah to salute every military family who has lost a son or a daughter. Um, what an honor. You know, that's one of the things that I'm so blessed with, all the amazing hours and hours and hours of you and your family and your loved ones and the things that matter to our community. One of the greatest things I ever did was to hook up with Fred Wyndham and to spend many, many hours behind a camera as he filmed any and everything we cooked. And we would cook some crazy stuff. People would send a recipe. Sometimes I would test it before we went live. Sometimes I would just trust you. And one day I called him and I said, hey, strawberries are in. I'm going to come up with this recipe. And he said, OK. And he said, have you tried it? I said, nope, I hadn't, but we're going to do it live. And he was like, OK. So we did the strawberry cobbler and it worked perfectly. It was so easy, so simple, and it's because RNA had beautiful, beautiful strawberries coming in. The program was also the debut of Angel Spirit, and it's because we were in Charlene's beautiful kitchen, and um, I had these great ladies there, and we were gonna do a program, and they didn't even have a name, and that's the day Angel Spirit came to be. And at the same time, Courtney was there, and uh, y'all have watched Courtney Frady grow up and be, she's now a big girl, and she was a, a young teenager when this program was done. Charlene's daughter was there. She was a young teenager. She's now a teacher and a mom, and uh, it's just, it's amazing how the time has just flown by. But we're gonna take you now. Everybody asked about this recipe, and they said, are you serious? Is that all you do to make strawberry cobbler? And I said, of course it is. So we're going to take you now on a way back to Charlene's home and a spring day when the strawberries were abundant at RNA Orchards. Write down how we do it and just watch because it's super, super simple. Here we go. Welcome to Heart of the Home, Away From Home. I'm Sherry Martin, and I am away from home, but I'm not too far away from home. I'm in Courtney's home, and I rounded up Cheyenne in Gilmer County and Charlene who happens to be the princess of the house. <laughs> well, wow, you're the queen. The queen. This is a princess. There you go. <laughs> Charlene, you know we loved your house. Yes. We decided to come back. We're it was so glad. perfect. It was perfect. You kind of designed this around what we needed. It's wide open spaces. We can fit a lot of people. The kitchen is perfect. And thank you, thank you, thank you for welcome, welcoming us back. Now, you and I will be at work again tomorrow morning yes. on North Georgia Now Today. You gonna give me a little heat, cause I've done some crazy things today, haven't I? <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> it has been a little bit of a crazy day. Today is um, rainy, stormy. We had to wait a little while, so we're late getting started. But that's okay, because you and I came in from work. We're still dressed from work. The girls came in from school, and we're gonna do two simple, simple recipes. Now, Cheyenne, your your job is really, really hard, honey. Washed blueberries. You're gonna put them in a pan. 
Courtney, you're going to cut up the strawberries and have, we're going to make two of the easiest cobblers in the world. Now, Charlene, you're going to start this with showing Miss Cheyenne how to melt a pound of butter. Do you know why you're doing it, not me? Why? Honey, the only button I can see on the microwave is popcorn. <laughs> and we're not making popcorn, we're making butter. We're melting butter. We are actually melting one pound. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make two cobblers, a blueberry and a strawberry. Which one do you like best? Um, strawberry. Which do you like best? Strawberry. Who's going to eat the blueberry? Daddy Charles. Yes. King Charles will eat the blueberry. <laughs> okay. Charlene, go ahead and melt that. Now, Courtney, all you have to do, cut up your strawberries. They should cover that pan. That's going to be simple, simple, simple. The hard part, your mom and I are going to do the crust. But we're going to teach y'all because one day, we, go. we expect to come home and dinner be ready. And what we're going to teach you today is so simple. Both y'all can do this. Now, do you ever cook at home? Yes, I do. Courtney, do you? I do. Good. And, and we said last time we were here, we're going to teach you some simple recipes. You can have company, and you can do it yourself without depending on your mom, because your mom's like me. She works a couple of jobs. Mm -hmm. So, And you're one job, one school. Oh, you got it made. <laughs> got it made. Now, you want to go ahead and get your blueberries ready, and then if, um, let's see how hard this is going to be. Charlene, you think this is hard? I don't think so. Did these blueberries, some came from the store, and some, some came from the bushes in the, your yard? Mm -hmm. Yes. And your mom put those out, what, a couple of years ago? A couple ago? of years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll do your trash. We'll be the trash okay. man. There you go. That was so hard. That was hard, but look. Look, you got to get the stem off the blueberry. There you go. You can tell they're fresh picked, can't you? Yep. Good. Okay, now you want to help Courtney cut up some strawberries? Sure. Now, Charlene, have you ever made one of my cobblers? No. Well, honey, the hard part is I don't measure. I don't measure. Check that and see if the butter's melted. And the only liquid ingredient in the crust, you don't use milk, you only use butter. Melted? Yes. Well, Ooh. no, not quite. There's still a few. If it's, if it's just a little bit. That'll be okay. okay. Yeah, that'll be okay. And remember, a recipe is only a beginning. Okay, go ahead and put the butter in there. This is one pound of butter. And see how it finished melting. Mm -hmm. Now, the trick, and you will love this. You open the flour and I'm going to open the sugar, okay? The two of us are going to make wonderful magic things. A crust that is the best. Okay. It's crispy because it has sugar. Now you start pouring. Lightly, lightly. We're putting equal amounts. Go ahead, put a little bit more flour. Okay. Now are you going to guess at how much we put? About half okay. a bag. About, mm, I could say not a fourth of a bag. Yeah, not quite half. Okay. okay. Now we have sugar butter and flour, our only ingredients. No milk. And everybody who tries my recipe says, well, I may have put too much milk. It doesn't have any milk in it. It's a pound of melted butter and sugar and flour. Now, this is not the consistency we need, but this is the beginning. A recipe is only a beginning. Now, here we go. I'm getting sugar, you're getting flour. Okay. Start again. Go lightly this time. Sugar and flour. Now let's try and start up one more time. And remember the consistency should be like thick creamed potatoes. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be right, Charlene. You know what this is. Simple, simple, simple. Simple, simple, simple. <laughs> simple. And I am, you and I both know, there's no way we could work and do what we do and come home and cook. Get no. real. Get real. No way. How are you girls doing? Thank Pretty you. good. Do those smell wonderful? Yes. Wow, wow. I'm thirsty, Charlene. Have we got any diet drinks? We do. Good. Cool, is that okay? Good, we'll have us a diet drink. Girls, y'all thirsty? Yes. yes. Uh, oh, no, 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 we'll have to get you something. You can't drink those. No, 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 that's the secret ingredient for the recipe. You know, on Walton's Mountain, they had a secret ingredient for a recipe, but it wasn't Sprite. No. <laughs> it was not Sprite. Now, girls, look at this. This is going to be so hard. Y'all are going to have a hard time remembering this recipe. Da, 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 da. There's your sugar on your berries. Does that look hard? No. What about that? Now look what I'm going to do. I'm going to kick it up a notch. We're going to kick it up a little bit more. 
we combined Sprite and Diet Mountain Dew. And all you do is cover the berries so they're about a, see, they're floating. And that's the key. I used a 20 ounce and half of a smaller this bottle. This is where Coke and Pepsi meet. Coke and Pepsi have met. <laughs> I don't know if they're going to get along or not, but I think they are. I think they are. Now, I finished putting y'all strawberries in, a few more strawberries. And Charlene, we're going to do the hard part, honey. Oh, okay. this is so hard. We're going to put little dollops on top of the berries. And guys, if you want to use a diet. About like that. A little bit smaller. A little bit smaller. A little bit smaller. If you want to use a diet Sprite, you can, because you still get the sugar taste. And the mm -hmm. whole idea is this is a very light dessert. It's just the natural berries. And, well, light. It had a pound mm -hmm. of butter. I don't know. Yeah, it's okay. It's all right. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> we work it off. Yeah, today yeah. on the studio, I'm North Georgia now today. What do we have for breakfast? A Sherry Martin blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was just a little blizzard. It was a small one, you know. It was for a good cause. It was for a good cause. We were raising money for the Children's Miracle Network. Let's do those in little pieces like that. There you go. Okay. Isn't that cool? And it is really, really just thick cream potato looking. That's the texture. Perfect. Perfect. Put a little bit more because we do okay. like crust. And this truly will just be, and, and you know, the way you serve this is with Mayfield vanilla ice cream. Always. You know, start out with a light recipe and then doctor it up with a little Mayfield. There you go. Okay, now let's get a shot of that and then you can go ahead and put that in the oven. Girls, did you see how simple that was? Very simple. Yep. What you think of that? Is that something y'all can do? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And remember, it was a pound of butter and probably two cups sugar, two cups flour to begin with. And then we added a little bit more sugar and a little bit more flour. How y'all doing? Is that all the berries? Um, mm -hmm. Good. I think because the berries are a little bit bigger, we're going to kick this one up a little bit more. How there. long do you cook that for? About 45 minutes at 400. 45. And use your judgment. You know, nobody's oven. Oh, nobody's oven is alike. I don't care what it says. There you go. Now, we're going to do the crust on this. And this is so simple. We're going to... Go ahead and put the crust on the strawberry. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to teach the girls to make a cheeseburger loaf. That sounds Kids good. like cheeseburgers, yeah. don't they? Girls, you like cheeseburgers? Oh, yeah. I think you'll enjoy it. Okay, I challenge you. Go find some blueberries. Go find some strawberries and make yourself the simplest cobbler. And don't forget, you know, if you like to use a fat-free yogurt on it, if you want to do it with a diet drink, you can do that because it just adds that sweet flavor to it. And if you want to do it with stevia which i've been using a lot lately if you want to do it and and do it sugarless you can but you cannot do the crust sugarless you've got to do sugar in the crust it takes sugar flour and butter that's the magic combination to the recipe so you can cut it down a little bit by using a diet drink if you wanted to on the berries but you've got to use the sugar in the crust so don't forget that don't forget to tune in again tomorrow when we salute the Bridgmans because it is Alicia's birthday on Thursday, so please plan to be with us tomorrow. We're going to share a lot of their music tonight. Please check out my Facebook because the Southern Gospel Music Association is having an online concert tonight, and it is a way to raise money, so please, I will have it posted on my Facebook. Brother Travis will be taking messages and taking pledges from you if you'd like to make a contribution to the Southern Gospel Music Association, and I hope that you will do that. It's time for me to slide out of here. I'll see you again tomorrow only on ETC.